Sweat Pixel Live. My name's Adam Hanlon and I'm joined by our regular expert, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Good morning. Morning, Adam. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you today? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. Um, so, um, as is sometimes the way, Alex has had, uh, we are, he's desperate to show us, um, a new book arrive on his, through his um, letterbox, or possibly via the courier, um, and we thought we'd like to share details of that and to chat about some of the things that um, are around this new book. But I'll, anyway, I'm not going to get involved. I'll pass you straight on to Alex. Um, what's it all about, Alex? Um, well, no, I'm really excited to see this. It's um, a book called, um, am I full screen or half screen? You're full screen, you're full screen. Okay, that way I can then I hold it to the side here. Um, it's a book called How Wildlife Photography Became Art. It's a retrospective of the of 55 years of the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. They actually did a related book, and I'll, I'll sort of start with that maybe, yep. um, five years ago, called 50 Years of the Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Um, and this new book is very much an update of, of this book. It has a lot of the same images, but really quite a few more as well. It's a it's it's quite a lot thicker than the original book. I've not gone through and counted how many of the pictures are the same. Um, it's just arrived. The aim of the book is, to, yeah, is to, well, no, I, I've been enjoying it and I, I've put some post-its in for some pages <laughs> we're going to talk about. Um, the aim of the book is to chart the history of the competition from its beginnings, to chart how wildlife photography has evolved seen through the winning pictures of the competition yep. how stars have evolved how the aims of wildlife photography photographers has evolved how the technology that we're using to create our images have changed and what we're hoping and trying to achieve with our images yep. um, has changed down down the years and i think it's very interesting from that point of view yep. obviously the book is illustrated by the very best or certainly the most memorable shots that really define the different eras of the competition yeah. and so it's filled with many iconic images from the winners of the competition um, and you know really from from the, the great and the good of, 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 of nature photography because you know I can't really think of any great nature photographer who hasn't entered the competition at some point even if some of them maybe have progressed beyond entering by the later stage of their career um, they certainly all enter early on so it's it's really got amazing images from everyone including many of my favorite photographers in. Um, this is Jim Brandenburg, whose work I always adore seeing. Um, just, you know, and, and his work is it's so, so interesting. I'd encourage any nature photographer to look at his work, um, predominantly from North America. Um, this is another of, of Jim Brandenburg's pictures. It's lovely, yeah. Um, the Oryx. Um, this is an overall winner in the wildlife photographer back in the 80s. Yep. Um, but just, you know, just really for me such an influential photographer but i have to say it feels bad to pick out any name because if you actually go to the back of the book it's got a list of all the photographers and the pictures they've got in there and it is an absolute who's who um it's not just about the big names though there are plenty there are you know amateur photographers who are in this collection as well because they got you know one of those great shots yeah um you know it really is it's phenomenal i'm just gonna you know I'm just going to stick to my post-its. So <laughs> Get carried away. <laughs> but yeah, just just you know, beautiful, beautiful photography. Franz Lanting, of yeah. course, you know, amazing. Um, you know, Very another well real master of the, the art of nature photography. Yeah. Um, who else have I picked out here? Um, and then you know, there there are a number of, of great underwater Probably. images as well. So yeah. I'm a real believer as an underwater photographer, not just to look at underwater images. For inspiration, this is Lauren Ballester's incredible iceberg image. Yeah. Sort of quite a strange type of picture, really, for a wildlife competition. It is, yeah. But an amazing picture, nonetheless. Almost more of a, show... almost more of a landscape for photograph photographs, yeah, isn't I mean, it? It was yeah. in the the kind of um, na natural scenery type category. Yeah. But very strong. Very striking. And, yeah. 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 Um, this is actually this is um, by by Sandra um, Bartocha, yeah. um, who's is a wonderful. Um, um, photographer predominantly of, of plants and, and nature yep. and actually I, I, I chose this picture because it hangs on the wall just just over there um, <laughs> just on, on the other side of in, in my house it's, it's one of the few pictures I have photographs I have up in my house she shoots yeah. beautiful bokeh as well she's um, very yeah, no, trademarks to get your bokeh lovely yeah. I'd encourage anyone to, to look up yeah um, I, I think you know this is a start of photography it's quite hard to do this sort of high high key um, white type shit photography on an underwater, but been very popular for a long time on land. Yeah. Vincent Munier, um, whose owl is over here, is yeah. a, you know, an incredible photographer and really 
worth investigating for that. Um, I think some, you know, the graphic qualities of images like this. Yeah. This is um, Stefano's um, picture. I'm not going to. Well known picture. And then I, was, I think most of the rest I'm going to show you some of the underwater pictures in there. Um, this is David Hall's um, big belly seahorse portrait taken in, in Tasmania. Yep. And it just remains one of those shots that, you know, it's still, you know, it's really quite an old shot, this one. It, um, this was from the competition in 2000, so 20 right. years old. 20 years Probably old, yeah. Probably years before that, maybe. And it is just an incredible image. I mean, it really is. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for a more perfect portrait yeah. um, of, of, a, of a seahorse. Yeah. Um, Okay, not an underwater picture, but I, I, I thought I'd, I'd show, show, show you this one of the um, um, of the mobulars um, yeah. jumping there. This is Florian Schultz's picture. It's very well known. I think yeah. it's been in adverts and things like that. But yeah, uh, and, but it's just I mean I, I'm skimming through this trying to find some you know sort of marine related pictures more than anything. Yeah. Um, and they're just iconic picture after iconic pictures. This is one of Paul Nicklin's famous pictures. He obviously has many amazing images. Yeah. Um, I think there's, there's at least four of his pictures in this book. Yeah. Um, which is obviously a treat. Um, and then the underwater um, section of the book, specifically. All right. Obviously, the competition, although it has an underwater category, you know, for me, the competition has always been much bigger than just having an underwater category. You should always think where else in the competition underwater pictures can be. And in fact, a lot of the pictures that are in this retrospective of the underwater aren't originally entered in the underwater category. Yeah. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, and a lot of the, the winners of the underwater category haven't made this book. Yep. So, you know, it's not that the winner of the underwater category is necessarily the best underwater picture each year. Yep. But this is um, David Dubois Stingrays. Yeah. Um, this, um, some other shots. This, this one I, I rather like. Um, so, you know, an older picture of, of Doug Perrines, but, you know, capturing Lovely. interesting behaviour. Yeah. Um, these are my spawning hamlets. Doug yep. Allens, um, who's better known as a um, cameraman. The film Doug guy, yeah. You Belugas. I yep. remember this one shot on a Nick Five, I think. Yeah. Um, so I remember them. Um, Norbert Wu, who's a friend of Wet Pixel for, for many years, he is. Um, had a lot of success um, in this competition down the years. Obviously, Emperor Penguins. Um, Doug Perrine, we talked about this in the high speed um, flashing episode of Wet Pixel Live. Yep. Doug Perrine's Feeding Bronze Whalers, which is a just, you know, if you ever want an underwater picture to capture a moment. That's it. Um, a few more, another one of mine. Yeah, Brian Scary's, snap it. Um, one. I think this is one of the iconic images of um, of the underwater world and, and obviously category winner in, in this competition. Brian Scarry's um, right whale. Is it right whale? Some, um, um, is it a humpback? Have I got that? I thought it was no, always... no, it's a right whale. All or, right, okay. Uh, yeah, southern right whale. I, I, it, whenever, whenever I see pictures of people standing on the seabed, it always <laughs> it always strikes me as being that's what they're about. You know, they're based around that image. <laughs> it's a trendsetter. A few more pages. I mean, you know, amazing shots. This is Alden McCardson's um, mm. split level of the humpback taken up in Norway. Mm. A little bit of black water mm. representing, I guess, the current trend in the competition. Mm. Um, Michael Patrick O'Neill's, um, you know, fl um, flying fish with a motion blur. Yeah. I think it's a really memorable shot. It is, yeah. Um, and. Um, one of Tony Wu's amazing whale shots. Yeah. Um, this one of a massive group of um, of sperm whales. And I think, I mean, and I'm not going to show you everything. I just thought I'd concentrate on the underwater sections. Yeah. And then also there are, of course, you know, there's conservation images in the book as well, you know, yeah. which have become an increasingly important part of, of nature photography. And these are just uh, um, Geordie Chiasis, who's had a huge number of pictures in the contest down the years. His turtle in the net. And Brian Scarry's Oceanic White Tip in a net um, there, but you know, I think you know, just just it's just a really fantastic book, um, an incredible source of inspiration. Yeah. And I have to say, if you are thinking of entering the competition, I do think books like this are really good for getting your brain in in the zone in terms of finding the sort of pictures that are likely to do well for you. Thanks very much, Alex. As um, we said, we decided to split this into two episodes. So I'd like to thank our sponsor for both episodes, Monaco Oasis, very much. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all again for part two very soon. Thank you very much. All the best. <laughs>